Hey now, we're back. William Hulbert. Uh, it's still Sunday. Go green still, but it's not going to be this. I'm going to drop this later in the week. More importantly, William Hulbert. Here's a trivia question about William Hulbert. He was the first Hall of Famer to pass away. So in the sense that of all the Hall of Famers living, who died the earliest, the longest, most far away ago, uh, whatever, most longest ago, it'd be William Hulbert. He died at age 49 in 1882. He was 49 years old. Uh, we've talked about, we did Morgan Bulk Ailey. We say he's probably the least deserving person in the Hall of Fame. He literally won a straw vote, president of the National League, didn't do anything, didn't show up for anything. They put Ben Johnson as the first American League uh, president. Like, oh, we might as well put the first National League president in also, who happened to be a Civil War uh, general. I don't know if he was a general, but he's definitely served in the Civil War, Morgan Bulk Elliott. But really, the president that took it to where it was was William Hulbert. And uh, many people felt it was an injustice that he was never inducted in the Hall of Fame. Finally, in 1995, over 100 years after he passed away, he got in the Hall of Fame. Uh, Believe it or not, I looked at the Halper catalog and people thought even back then, like he was going to get in the Hall of Fame and like, and like it was a great injustice. And like when he got in, people were sort of holding on to his autograph, those that could find it. Now, granted, his autograph is extremely rare. Ron lists his autograph at like less than 20 known examples. So, again, this is one of those where I say never buy a cut. That being said, probably my biggest auto, my biggest regret autograph wise was not buying this cut and we'll get to that in a moment so i guess without any further ado let's take a look at the autograph analysis of william hulbert so i mean we're starting right here at the psa database and they only have one known example and we'll get to this example here the, what you have see right here so when the national league was formed he was like i said he was on the board and so he was the first president so a lot of these cities when they formed their teams they had to get signed off so right here you could see I would love to own this piece. So the city of Detroit, when they were founded, again, not the Detroit Tigers in 1901. We're talking the Detroit Wolverines back in the 1880s. This was the founding document. Uh, Soden, who was on the Boston Red Sox at the time, I do have his autograph, but I digress. Holbert signed this as well. And again, this is a very rare document right here. Uh, I believe this sold for $27,000. I probably can look it up. So... Uh, let's take a look at some other autographs that we know to exist. Robert Edward Auctions has handled a couple of them right here. This right here, a signed letter back in 2008. This sold for $16,000. We're not even really talking much about the autograph of William Hulbert because really there's no cut. So he usually signed WM and a Hulbert. I guess we can go back to this one right here if we can zoom in on this. I mean, usually what we're looking at is their WA or WM and the Hulberts. The R sort of loops around up and back down and swoops down the teeth swoops back down right here and again there's no real cuts like i said out there if you're buying a guy it's gonna be like five to ten thousand dollars more than even huggins for a hulbert and he really he didn't do much he was never a player he was never a manager i don't even know if he ever stepped on the field for that matter but again a very rare autograph so again we're talking about this letter right here going back looking else what else is out here this was the psa one we just looked at again this sold for sixteen thousand dollars i remember th this was originally offered in uh Halper's auction was part of a couple of things. This is his original stock certificate. He was one of the founding members of the Chicago Cubs, then known as Chicago White Stockings. So he signed off his shares as secretary, as you can see right here. Again, these are really cool. Even if Halbert didn't sign this, these are really amazing. These are like original stock shares of the Chicago Cubs. How cool is that? So again, this sold for $14,000 back in 2016. I do remember when this came up. And there's another one that's REA handled right here. Again, this sold for $9,000 back in 2011. And you can see if we can zoom in right here. I don't know if we can zoom in or not. Like his autograph is right here. It's very, uh, this is in bad shape. But again, it's a William Hulbert autograph. So again, people were paying lots of money for it uh, even back then. Uh, Hunt Auction sold this one. Again, this is a cut, but I guess it's good enough for me. I guess if I were to buy it, I thought about it. Uh, this sold for $5,500. And last but not least, they had a Hunt had a couple of them actually that they handled. You can look at those as well if you want. So uh, we just looked at that one. Hold on. There's another one. So I bought the Huggins document. They had this as well. Uh, is this from William Hulbert signed this one? He might have signed this one. Just taking a look right here. It's tough to tell. I, I don't know. It's it's interesting that they have it. 
when it was not convenient, William Hubbard. Maybe, maybe he signed this, maybe he didn't. I don't know. I do know for a fact he did sign. Let's find the 2021. I can't even see it. On. They did sell, uh, like I said, they did sell another. Uh, yeah, here it is, William Hubbard. This is again another one from the. This is from the Green Diamond where my Huggins came from. This is a William Hulbert signed document. It only sold for $6,500, which honestly is a steal, in my opinion, uh, for William Hulbert. So last but not least, I want to show you this one. And this came from a very esteemed collector. And it sold, for, as you can see, for $3,840. This is a cut. Uh, this came from the same document that the only known Eddie Joss came from. Uh, it was from Lajouet, the person that bought it. Uh, I was offered this very same autograph for $2,500. Uh, this when I first started collecting deceased autographs, and I passed on it. Uh, I know it was not, JSA had a hard time even authenticating this. And if JSA has a hard time authenticating this, uh, it puts some doubt in it. I don't want to say it's fake. I don't want to say it's real. I do kind of regret passing this up on this autograph. I know I'll probably never see another one. But that being said, it was a cut, so I can live with it. So uh, that's about William Hulbert. Uh, Ron said there's a full name William Hulbert out there as well. I've never seen it. Everything you've seen is all the ones I've seen. I mean, Hunt does I'm sorry, Hug Heritage. Heritage doesn't even have one. So, I mean, like I said, there's less than 20 out there. Um, a lot of the Hall of Fame may have a couple as well. They're very, very rare. You're a deep Hall of Fame collector if you're going after William Hulbert, which I am. It's one of the 50 that I need. So we're going to move from Hulbert to the very last of the H's, and that is Catfish Hunter. But until then, as always, thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button and keep collecting.